Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kika and this is a little bit embarrassing. Um, I've been having this very photography focused YouTube channel for over two years without ever making a video dedicated to probably the most important thing when it comes to taking photos, which is light, of course. Today, I wanted to sit down and talk about light and give you some really helpful tips that you can implement immediately when taking photos that, trust me, will dramatically improve your photography. Some of these tips uh, are things that I found out through the hard way <laughs> and I only work with natural light. So we're going to talk about working with natural light when you don't have a fancy studio set up and no kind of professional lights. So just using with the light that the sun is providing us. I think, unfortunately, if you have bad light when you're taking a photo, no matter how good the idea is or an amazing uh, moment that you're trying to capture, if the light is dull or bland or isn't good, it's really, really difficult to save. And I have been through this. I've sometimes spent hours on something and then I just didn't have good light and it, yeah, just had to scrap it and kind of abandon that photo. So light is something that you really want to be mindful about and pay attention to. Also at the moment, because it's so dark, it can be tricky to just find enough light and what to do when you don't have enough light and how to fix bad light. So all these things we're hopefully gonna cover in this video and you'll leave here feeling like you have more tools. So when you get that point of you want to take a photo, but it's maybe too dark or you're thinking, what time of day should I shoot? You'll have those answers in this video. Now you can divide light into hard light and soft light. And hard light usually means when the sun is at its highest and it's very, very harsh sunlight. So it creates this really big contrast between shadows and light. Now, soft light is more scattered and you'll usually have that on a cloudy day, like for example, today. And usually soft light is easier to work with because colors will be more realistic and you won't have these contrasts that are so dramatic. Now, when you know these differences, you can also choose this depending on what type of concept you're doing and maybe for your artistic vision, having really harsh contrasts and uh, going out and shooting in bright sunlight might be what you're going for. Um, usually for when you're kind of starting out, um, I think cloudy days are easier or if it's really sunny, finding a place where there is actually shadow is easier and will be easier to edit also. Finding good light is all about observing how the sun moves throughout the day. And you probably heard this before, but golden hour. So just those hours or that hour before the sun sets is usually really gorgeous for taking photos. It's the same just after the sun is rising. Uh, that hour is usually really, really pretty light. And it's very magical for capturing those atmospheres of just a little bit out of the ordinary. So definitely be look out for those types of light if you're going for a photo that maybe you want to have kind of that fairy tale vibe or just something a little bit out of the ordinary. When you're shooting indoors and it can get pretty dark and maybe you don't have big windows, that can be a real challenge. Um, my tip there would be to just be as close to the window that you can possibly be. And usually the best way is to face sideways. So instead of you being in front of the window, because then you will just be a silhouette essentially. Um, and you also don't really want to be if you're in front of the window. So the light hits straight on your face that can sometimes look a little flat. So I've just found, and of course this is a matter of preference and taste, that being sideways placed to the window works pretty well. And that usually creates some nice depth in the photo. If you're working with a camera, then definitely shoot your pictures in raw format because that just means that even if it's pretty dark, you can go in and increase the exposure without losing too much detail. Um, if you don't have a camera or if it's just really dark, you can make a do-it-yourself reflector, which basically just means that you will reflect whatever existing light you have onto your subject. So if you're taking a portrait, for example, um, you can use that and you can use a mirror for this, or then you can glue some tin foil onto some cardboard and use that as your reflector. 
I've also seen people use like foam boards or just something that's very light and reflects light as a reflector. One of the things that inspires me the most is definitely working with light and also throughout the season light will be different and I don't know if you've noticed when you've been traveling that light can have different colors depending on what what place you are in or what space you're in the world um, and that's I don't know that's I think one of the greatest things with photography that's something that I maybe didn't notice before but then once you go out there with your lens and your camera you start seeing these things so observing light is definitely one of the biggest tips and also in your home seeing what kind of patterns maybe the when the sun shines in it's creating on the floor and using those in photos so just keeping in mind uh, and yeah keep your eyes open on how you could use that in an interesting way in a photo. Also, because rules are meant to be broken, sometimes maybe you want to actually place your subject so that the sun is shining from behind and you actually become a silhouette and just playing with shadows and light. That way you can take some really striking images. But again, I think it comes down to observing light and being really mindful about it when you set up. And usually my tip would be to never sacrifice light for, even if you have a location that you think looks really nice, uh, but then the light isn't so great. Usually, unfortunately, then that photo is gonna be pretty hard to save. So I would instead go towards the light, essentially. <laughs> and maybe that means have to compromise in your location or in your background but I think in the end that will still produce a better result. All right, I hope these tips were insightful for you and maybe it will make you think about light a little bit more next time you take a photo. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have anything else or if this is something that you pay attention to when you're taking photos. Uh, also remember to use the hashtag Kikas photo challenge when you're posting your photos online. I can't wait to share another photo challenge on Thursday with you. Um, until then, take care and uh, come and say hi. I'm over at Kudovakiko on Instagram. So see you there or see you here. Until next time, bye!